I remember there was a girl who I um I was dating her when my dad died and um broke up with her maybe three weeks after that. And and what I what, here's the here's the situation. I I didn't do it in a bad way. But what I said to her was, uh, because we you know, we were dating long distance, but we broke up in person. And I said, I right now do not want to be beholden to anyone. So like she was trying to check in, be like, hey, are you okay? Thinking of you, blah, blah, blah. And I said to her, I was like, you're not doing the wrong things. I don't want to answer those questions to anyone. I just don't want to check in. Yeah, I, yeah. Don't, I don't want that. I had a boyfriend at the time when my dad died who, um, when I came back to LA, was like, you didn't call me enough while you were out there. And I was like, actually, I think we're breaking up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you know, I actually meant to call you to say goodbye. Yeah, ex- literally. I was like, mm, I was kind of busy. Yeah. Ooh. Um. Uh, bye. Um. Oh, by the way, I guess before we keep going, we should I should introduce the tea. Um. So for those who are steeping at home with us, we have our steepers who steep at home. Steeping at home. Yeah, it's so fun. Um. For those steeping at home, we are drinking I Can't Sleep, uh, which is a pity party tea uh, made by the wonderful Chase O'Donnell. Shout out, Chase. Shout we out, love Chase. You. If you are not familiar with Chase, go listen to her stand up after you're done listening to Ellery's. So Chase is truly one of my favorite stand ups right now. Well, other I was going to say they should listen to you first sure. and then her. Thank you. And then me. But well, I, I guess I should be on that list. <laughs> <laughs> listen to my stuff first. Oh, that's great. Did she like formulate the blend? She chose the blends. She like went, that. she would like, uh, got sent tons of samples and then like figured and, like, out what she tested. liked. Yeah. That's cool. That's I want to cool. do that just so I can get all that tea. I am trying to start a beverage company with, um, my friend Maggie. We, it started as a joke and, and then we got investors and it got kind of serious. Um, <laughs> I would say that immediately gets serious. Yeah. So, but we're, we're trying to formulate a hard, uh, like, like an alcohol company you know how seltzer is very big right now yes we're trying yeah. to formulate a high abv canned cocktail it, how high like as high as legally allowed oh well mm, yeah. yeah like a 25 percent of the uh, lettuce uh, mm. well um i will tell you this i feel like i might be in your wheelhouse i'm not a big drinker anymore uh not that i was like a huge drinker at any point but like i i just like don't drink a ton these days however um i have some very high abv beers in my fridge that like I'll take out every now and again because I would prefer to drink like one really high quality, interesting drink. That's exactly what we're going for. I don't want to pound rather like, than like Bud five. Lights. Exactly. Our sort of like our in our in is sort of like something that um, makes you buzzed before you get bloated. I mean, that's a great line. You wrote that, didn't you? I did. Yeah, I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. I mean, I've been a copywriter in many of my past lives. So how many lines? Seven, eight. I just mean I've been a copywriter maybe 12 times. Okay, yeah, then, oh, okay, yeah. I was just thinking. I was like, maybe she's spiritual. But I before know. AI came. No, I, I think in my past lives, I was like a dock worker. Do you, do, well, okay. I'm going to chase down the dock worker thing for <laughs> a second because now you're making me think of like The Wire season two. Um, oh, but, no, that's a really... I was thinking more like um, Manchester by the Sea. It's so sad. I mean, that's sort of where I'm from. I, I know, but so sad that movie. Um Michelle Williams performance, my God. Oh, pow- she's a killer. Powerhouse. Yeah. There are some actors and actresses where like if I'm going into the movie, if it's a drama, I'm like, I know they're gonna take me from the knees. They're just gonna take me out. Really? And like Michelle Williams is one of them who will just she will just take me out. She fades to the background for me a little bit. I'll be honest. Like I always I always forget that she exists and then I see a movie with her and I'm like, she's amazing. Really? Yeah. So my favorite my like my favorite actress of all time is Allison Janney. Love. I totally agree with that. She is a chameleon too. But she will also like her drama is amazing. I don't know and that I've ever seen is any of her drama. I really enjoy her as a comedy actress. Have you seen The Way Way Back? No, should I? It's probably my it's in my top ten or five. This just came up in the last really? episode, I think, right? Are you a big movie guy? I love movies. Interesting. I'm a big TV person. What what have you watched recently that you really liked? Well, right now I'm in a big reality and TV space. Oh, I'm not going to be able to relate at all. No, but that's okay. But I love I love cartoons. King of the Hill is my favorite show ever. Oh, okay. Um, it reminds me of my hometown. So anytime I'm really homesick, I watch King of the Hill. In recent sure. years, I loved Dairy Girls. I thought that that was great. I'm very excited Can for I tell the, you? the it's new on my one list. From her. I haven't seen it. She's amazing. So good. And then um, I really loved How to with John Wilson. Okay, so I wanted to watch that, but I told somebody I don't do, and, and please disabuse me of my ignorance if I'm wrong, I don't do cringe-style comedy. No, not cringe at all. Okay. Like, I... Like, I don't do Nathan for no, you. No, I don't care for Nathan for you. Yeah. I don't care for Nathan for you, but I thought How To with John Wilson was very kind and lovely. Hmm. 
yeah, it's very hopeful and like optimistic and sort of sweet, which is not what you would expect. But it, I no. it was, I was really blown away. I don't know that the trailer gave me all of that. Oh, see, I didn't watch the trailer. I watched it. Interesting. Like, no, you should watch the first. It's like it's a it's like a love letter to life, through the lens of it's this guy who is clearly like obsessive compulsive or something, and and he tapes everything. He has a bunch of he has filmed basically every day of his whole life. So he has this incredible archive of footage. Okay. And um, they're stitching stories together based on on that. It's almost documentary. It is documentary style. And so they go through the footage and they find storylines and then they they sort of like expand on the storyline. So there's one where they go to like a scaffolding convention and there's one where they find the um, CEO of Bang Energy. And then there's one where they learn about um, what's cut, cut off when you're circumcised. The, the, your foreskin. Yeah, it, the foreskin regrowing. By the way, I feel like that was anti-Semitic that you asked me. Um, well, I'm asking the room. Okay. My fiance's name is Jess, and somebody just will look at me and be like, you are being very loud. And I was like, this is my voice. This is my normal volume. And um, and what I say, what I just did to you earlier, is I always say to her, if she says that, I'll be like, feels decently anti-Semitic. <laughs> <laughs> like, I will always bring it right back to that. Only reason to be Jewish, really. That's the only reason? To just tell people that they're being anti-Semitic. Yeah, I think so. I mean, the food, too. There's some... There's some good food. There's some good food. I was going to say, I, and maybe I'm wrong, and I'm open to that, but there's no fathomable way I can imagine you're Jewish. No, I'm not. Yeah, I didn't think so. No, fathomable way. Yeah. I couldn't fathom it. Okay, interesting. What? Why? I don't know. I have gotten it before. No, you have Yeah, not. a good handful of times, actually. Is it just because you were with Amy and you two were sitting next <laughs> to each other? I don't know why. But also, <laughs> I'm from I'm from New York, and so I grew up around a lot of Jewish kids. I figure. So maybe just... A lot of bat mitzvahs. That, yeah, lots and lots of bat mitzvahs. Mm. Yeah, when I moved to LA and I met people who had been like, oh, I only went to one bat mitzvah growing up. I was like, wait, really? Only one? Only one? Yeah. My bar, my bar mitzvah was, um, we did. We Wait, did, what was the theme? No theme. No theme. No theme because we didn't have a ton of money, That's so my very parents were like, you. "We can't throw a party. We're going to do a luncheon." And I've got to tell you, like, the fastest way to not get social credibility at age twelve is to hand out finger foods in your backyard. Oh my god, so true. Yeah, so true. Um, I wish I had a theme. I don't know what the theme would have been. I Probably love the New York Knicks. Maybe that's a great theme. I'm a Mets fan. You're a Mets fan. I am a Mets okay. fan. I'm not a baseball guy, but I respect it. Um, I just sort of like to have something to complain about. <laughs> That's why I'm a Knicks fan. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Where it's nice to have a little chip on your shoulder about something. And then, and then you know, I'm also a Dodgers fan. So it's, I have a... Are they, this is everyone who likes baseball, who's listening to this is going to hate me. Are they enemies? No, they're not enemies at all. The Mets are like not even competitive. Yeah, the Knicks haven't won since 73. Exactly. Yeah. So, but the, you know, I'm, I'm a Mets fan for the... For the cred to feel like I'm sure. su- supporting. Like, Both blue and orange. Yeah, exactly. Yep, yep, yep. And then, uh, you know, when rubber meets the road, I'm a I'm a Dodgers fan because I like to, uh, they'll win. Do you go a lot? To Dodgers games? Yeah. I did, but the tickets are going to be crazy expensive this year, so I will probably not be able to Because of Otani? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So I, I probably won't be able to go as much this year. Interesting. I, I haven't been to a baseball game in... I went to a preseason game 10, this week and I, and I saw him play and it was... Revelatory? Yeah. Interesting. I mean, he's supposed to be like the best, right? I've heard, so I've heard. He called me to be like, should I take this deal? And I was <laughs> like, yes. And you're like, it doesn't sound like that much money. I was like, honestly, go to Anaheim. That's where oh everybody my God. wants to be. Uh, do you ever go to basketball games? Yeah, I like basketball games. Who's your team? I'm a Lakers fan, obviously. So you're, you're disrespecting me in my own house. Oh, um, well, it's just so easy and fun to be a Lakers fan. I guess I could see that. Do you know what I mean? But, but I'm a Buffalo Bills fan when it comes to football. When did you get to L.A.? Because you grew up in New York. When did, I grew up in L.A. I mean, I grew up in New York. Uh, and then I moved to Boston to go to college. Right. And then I went to... Cold. Very cold. But not as cold as where I was from. Sure. And then I moved to LA in 2016, September, so do August. You, if someone said to you, like, are you a New Yorker or an Angelino, where are you at with that? That's a, a really interesting question. I've never been asked that before. I We ask hard hitting questions here. That is a really hard hitting yeah, question. Yeah. I don't know. I've lived here for seven years. I do consider when I say like, oh, I'm going to go home. I mean, LA. So do I. I hate when someone says, where are you from? And I always go, do you mean where did I grow up or where do I live? If I'm traveling. If I'm traveling and somebody's like, where are you from? Well, no, I'll be like, I live in LA now, but I'm from New York. I do the same thing. Yeah. I get very specific. Do you have a lot of New Yorker pride? I do. 
I have very complicated feelings, I guess, about New York because it's not like I don't have like that New York City pride. Also, the, the town I'm from, I grew up in a town with 1600 people in it. Sure. Very small. You go back, it's mostly like empty buildings and like nature has taken back over. So a lot of the uh, buildings are condemned and the the roofs are down and there's trees and stuff or like vines. So it's interesting. Very economically depressed. I mean, well, I wish you hadn't said that sentence right after I said interesting. No, but it, um, it is interesting. And I feel like it is interesting. But it's it's also, it's. I mean, I am proud of it, but it's interesting. Do you know what I mean? No, I agree with that. I I, I wonder, this is how sad I am. You're going to you're gonna laugh. My immediate thought when you said that, I was like, oh, it'd be great to film a movie there. I think that all the time. Or that maybe I'll take a year and I'll, I'll go back and I'll live there and I'll write a book or something. But it's so sad and it's so hard to think about that like... It's almost overwhelming. Can you get an oat milk latte there? That's no, no, kinda... there's no coffee shop where I grew up. What happened? There's no coffee shop in the town I, I grew thought up. I thought mis- I misheard you. Um, no, that's real. I went back um, every year. I spend Christmas with my grandma at her okay. house. Yeah, lovely. And she. I've always heard great things about her. I mean, she's amazing. Top notch gal. Um, What's her name? Top notch gal. Way? Becky. Becky. Be- Becky Smith. She still works. She cuts she, hair. She, I'm sorry. She still works. She still works. How 80, old is she? 85. She cuts hair. Becky, you sly fox. I know. Um, I wouldn't say that about her. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I meant it in a comp- very complimentary <laughs> way. I think, that that's, I think it's good for her, though. There's a lot of data that suggests that um, people live the longest when they have something called ADL, activities of daily life. Oh. Things that you need to show up for. Oh, I thought it was the Anti-Defamation League. Um, I mean, uh, they co-opted it. Yeah, for sure. My mother is 74. And... Um, sometimes what she'll say and I, I i don't think it's a bad thing but sometimes she'll be like oh i don't even know what day it is and i'm like um, yeah i think it's important that you have something to do also my grandma is at a point where everybody she knew growing up is dead yeah all of her friends are dead she's the last one of her siblings left alive mm. my her husband and my father her son died in the same year so she's had a, a real go of it but she's still really funny has has great stories is very on it yeah. And, and we write letters back and forth and we call. But anyway, I I go, can we write letters? Love. Lo- I am loving Grandma Becky more and more. She's really big in my life, actually. It's very I'm, no, I'm not even being sarcastic. No, I yeah. genuinely think she sounds great. Which is another reason I, I would go and I'll, I would want to like live there for a year. But like I said, very economically depressed. There's no work. There's nothing to do. And it's also, it's like, don't you feel anytime you leave LA, that's when everybody wants to book you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Anytime. Let me tell you something. Every time I've gotten uh, a role, I've been cast in something, I've gotten a big show that I wanted, anything like that, was when I was not supposed to be here. Exactly. I've had to cancel things. Yes, or fly back early. Very frustrating. Very frustrating. And so I'm like, if I left for a year, would everybody just forget about me? Um, I, I, this is the, going to be the darkest. Can we get dark for a split second? So um, I lived in Chicago before this. And... um, it is very competitive to try and get like picked up by Second City into their what what I would consider a farm system. You do improv. Uh, I did improv and sketch and storytelling. Wow. Um, and musical theater. Uh, are you surprised? I didn't think Not so. Not at all. And here's the thing: don't know whether to be sad about that. <laughs> um, uh, but um, I got you know I got the call. I was so struck by the call that I didn't speak. She's like, "Hey, Josh, we we'd love to bring you in and like have you be a part of this team." And I was like. <laughs> bear in mind not a facetime and i'm just like huh? and she goes she's hello yeah she's like are, are you there i was like oh, yeah 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 she's like would you want to do that i'm like um yeah that'd be great um and so it meant like i was you know doing nonstop. i was like i was i was writing or performing or or workshopping uh probably about seven nights a week and uh which was fine and i liked it but uh i will never forget uh, I went back to see my parents in uh, Florida in for Thanksgiving in November. In February, my sister goes, I'm going to go back to see them again. Do you want to come? I said, I can't. Like, I'm, I've got to be there seven nights a week. She's like, really? I was like, I just can't do it. And of course, then my dad dies in May. And like, I didn't see yeah. him on that trip. And I was like, oh, motherfucker. But you can't do like the whole time that my dad was dying. I was like, oh, like, I kind of want to move home. And he was like, don't do that. Yeah. He's like, you spent all your money to move out to L.A. Like, you're building your life out there. I mean, not in so many words, but he, like, sort of did discourage me from moving back. And then when he died, I was like, well, fuck. Yeah, you're like, listen, what, you can't tell me what to do now. Exactly. But now that's sort of why I'm like, should I move back for a year, like, while my grandma's still alive and, like, just hang out? But I think it would be, like, just steeping in my own depression for a few years. Oh, for, I, like, I've done that. For a few months. Yeah, it's pretty fun. I don't know if that's good for me. It's not. 
I don't know if that's good for me. I also am such like a, I really, I, I have like a monkey brain. Like I'm very, I'm wired like an animal where like it takes a lot, it takes a lot of thoughtful effort to, to put myself in a good place where like I really, I'm like a evangelist about getting enough sleep. Like yeah. I eat really healthy. I try to go outside. Like I try to, I do a lot of stuff in my community. Like I really have to pay attention to like the combination of stuff that I let mm-hmm. myself do and it's like if I even look at Instagram for too long I become suicidal like I have to really dial in how this is a stupid question how are you getting eight hours of sleep a night you are a what comic who's out well late. here's the other thing is I I it does come at the expense of comedy I don't really hang out after shows anymore I don't I, do I remember I was I, yeah you had said like I'll be there and then I like sat and you yeah you never showed up it was weird <laughs> that's listen it's fine <laughs> It's fine. Um, I know. I really do The listeners don't. believe it. <laughs> <laughs> and I do that a lot. And it's, uh, no, I, I, it's very rare that I do a show that's past 11. And if I do, I will always lie and be like, hey, I have another set. Can I go up first? Can I tell you what someone just did the other day? And I fucking loved it. Okay. I'm not going to out who this was. I'll tell you off mic. Uh, well, actually, fuck it. I don't think it's that bad to do. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> so, 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 do you know Chloe Radcliffe? Love. Yes. Okay. Love so, her. Right. Such a fan. <laughs> so, so, Chloe, so, the person running this show, and I love when people do this, started an Instagram group. Hey, here, you know, here here's are the, the times. Lineup. Here's the parking. Blah, 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 blah. Chloe hits it up. Hey, like, I have to run to another spot. By the way, she's, I have to duck to another spot. And I was like, first time duck has been used where it was meant you know, and she's like, I have to duck to another spot. Do you mind if I go early? And, you know, the organizer was like, no problem. And I'm like, cool, cool, cool. Chloe goes. You see her on Instagram five minutes after. <laughs> even better, even better. Chloe goes first. I'm like fifth or something. So I'm like, what? I'm just chilling. I have nowhere to go. I can't go anywhere. Fifth, yeah. you know. So Chloe comes back in and uh, and I was like, hey, like from what I heard, it sounded great. She's like, yeah. She goes, well, I got to go pick up my mom from LAX. And I was like. Now what's the truth? Huh. She's like, yeah. And I was like, no, it's not worth it. <laughs> and I was just like, didn't but say But I was like, that's a good excuse too. Phenomenal excuse. If, she, if I were running that show and she said that, I was like, yeah. Yeah, obviously. Go do that. But like the fact that she was like, yeah, I have to duck to another spot. But instead was like, I'm picking up my mom from LAX. I was like, okay. <laughs> okay. All what, right. What a weird. Okay. No, that's me. That's totally me. You, and But they would be a lie both times. I was going to say, given that you live in Hollywood, I don't think you're picking anyone up from LAX. It's very rare. If I were flying in. It, you know, and we did this more often. Would you pick me up? From no, you live in Venice. I'm like, well, actually, because you live in Venice, but my boyfriend lives right next to the airport. So he lives in Westchester. Basically, he lives in Playa del Rey. He lives uh, 15 minutes from the airport. So I always just, he better pick you up anytime. <laughs> well, you sometimes he does. Sometimes he doesn't. I, I was going to say anything. What's his name? <laughs> First name only. I don't need the last his name. His name is Drew. Drew. Here's the thing. It's 15 minutes. It's okay? 15 minutes away. Is salary not worth it? Thank you for, and thank you for saying that. Of course. And thank you for saying that. I'm going to text Drew after this. Please, please do. I'm be like, Drew, do better. Um, I'm kidding. We love you, Drew. Um, but because he lives so close to the airport, sometimes I'll. You're in a long distance relationship. You know that, Yeah, right? we are, but that's kind of what I like about it. So that way you can kind of go about your day to day. Yeah. And I'm yeah. also like, I, I have had a lot of tension in my other relationships because I didn't want to hang out all the, uh, every day of the week. Mm. I'm very much like, I need three days a week is kind of my max. What are you going to do if you end up, I don't know if you don't, I don't know if you want to get married or not, but like if you choose to get married, what are you going to do in that circumstance? I don't know. I always forget I'd cross that bridge when I get there. I think it's it's a reasonable bridge not to cross now. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It just, it's never been on my goal list and Mm. I'm like, I'll just start dealing with that when I need to. Yeah. So it, 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 I mean, I'm not married yet. How long have you lived with your fiance? Uh, Can I tell you, I hate that word. You were going to say girlfriend and you flipped it and, but I don't even like the word fiance. I think it's terrible. But then when I say girlfriend, people go, yeah, mm -hmm. your to your wife to be, Um, we'll we'll say girlfriend Um, or partner. I mean, that's a down partner. Yeah. I was going to say you're downgrading her. Um, I would never. She's a lovely, lovely gal. Um, We, so we moved in together by accident. We started dating uh, long distance and we both travel a lot. So we would just meet in random cities all over the place. Oh, I love that. It was great. Uh, We were in Denver uh, around March 15th maybe Uh-oh, 2020 correct and uh we we're supposed to go to Vail the next day to go skiing together and um I wake up at 4 30 a.m and I just like I, I wake her up and she's like what's up I was like I'm sure this COVID thing is like probably nothing and it's like it's being overblown but like I'm freaking out I don't want I don't want to go skiing like I, I want to get out of here like I don't like I don't want to be in a city where I don't live this yeah. is not good for me and she was like listen we're a team if you don't want to go I'm not going to go she's like what about this 
they say, I know it's probably not going to happen, but they say we might have to quarantine for like two weeks. And I was like, yeah. And she goes, now this is funny because you know where we are now. But she goes. The idea that it would be two weeks. <laughs> yeah. But I believed that. I mean, when it happened, I believed that. I too. think we all believed it. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And she goes, she goes, why don't we do this? Let's fly back to Houston. Let's grab my two cats. And we'll we'll just we'll bring him to L.A. and we'll just have like have a cute like two week vacation together. OK. And I said, that's amazing. And, and then I, it took five months. Uh, no, she never left. I mean, like because the pandemic lasted so long, we just at that, at that point we were living together. And so we were just like, cool, I guess we moved in without really. Whoa. Knowing it. Yeah, that's. That's bananas. It is. That's bananas. But to relate back to your story for a minute, I always I liked being in that long distance relationship because I was like, cool. You do your thing, I'll do my thing, but like I love you and let's link up at you know on the phone at night and like catch up and it's all good. Um the pandemic made us unhealthily codependent. So like yeah, it's a little weird. It's a little weird to like be in that cuz I used to be like you where I was like, yeah, like I want to do my own thing. Now like is if she so much as goes to the grocery store, I'll like text her be like, "Hey, <laughs> where'd you go she's like pick up groceries i'm like cool i'm just here by myself oh i mean it is like um sometimes it does feel very far away and the and the drive feels long yeah but it also feels like because he works in beverly hills so he has my place to crash and it's a living situation like he lives here and works there and then you live there and it's all very confusing it's all very confusing he also doesn't have a car um w- wow how yeah. would he pick you up from the airport then well, every he'll borrow somebody's car or he'll bring my car hmm. or whatever. Um, and people lend. People are always. How does he like, get to work? He bikes, or okay. he rides the bus. Imagine that. I can't. <laughs> yeah. I, okay. I mean, LA has a very functional metro if you know how to use it. I, being someone who's been exposed to New York and Chicago, I find LA's public transportation problematic. Sure. But it's what we have, and it is you, it is deeply usable. I I believe that. Yeah. I. That reminds me that I think, and I may be wrong, but I don't think that I am, you're, from your social media, you seem very heavily involved in the ideas of wanting to improve the city that we live in. Yeah, I'm fairly, I'm fairly locally activated. I'd say that. Yeah, because I think like you and I both align pretty closely on the need for many, many more resources and housing for the un- unhoused community. Um, and a lot more attention on their mental health and not just on their physical well-being and giving them those resources so they can have that, you know, because it's a right, not a privilege to be able to get mental health services. Um, I just, re- I'm just like remembering now that you're talking about the public transit that I think you post fairly often on, on, in this, in these categories. Uh, a little bit. I'd say I can, I can kind of pop off about them. Okay. I don't know that I should use my social media that way all the time, but, um, uh, that wasn't me saying that you no, do, but I do, I have a lot of spicy takes about housing. I run a soup kitchen in, in Koreatown and then I've done that for you the run one. Yeah. I've done that for the last four, four years. What do you, sorry. What four do you years mean by, Did you like, you started it? I did start it. Yeah. I was, but it's, it, it's part of a larger program. So it's like, they have like four four days a week I'm just one of the days okay and now I work there a bunch and I, I volunteer a lot of days of the week and um That's but a- but I do Tuesdays and it's frankly a lot of comedians and indus- industry people and then regular people too industry people who come like to- come and volunteer oh who volunteer I thought you meant who are coming to the soup kitchen for, oh, for no. the food but we do eat there I eat there every week I'm well, like we make good food oh I don't doubt it I used to uh, volunteer at a soup kitchen when I was living in Minneapolis and um hardest part was not eating all of it True. And also we get a bunch of um groceries donated to us. So I'm mm. like, I got a I got a big thing of strawberries this week. Huh. That would have been like ten dollars off the shelves. And I was like, sure, that's that's great. You were like, um uh, all y'all, I'm gonna keep the strawberries, but we'll give you some other stuff. We had so m- I got I had took one container, but we had so many Listen, breaking news. And there's Ellery also a shelf steals. life. There's also a shelf life on strawberries, okay? <laughs> and I also told we had truly because we work with this one, um, this this one we get donations from this one place called Hollywood Food Coalition, mm-hmm. uh, and they donated probably two thousand strawberries to us, and we just couldn't use them all. I'm sorry, like two so 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 many strawberries. Like, I mean, tr- truly, so many strawberries. So I was like, anybody who wants a pack, take one. That is insane. And sometimes we'll do um if we have stuff that's like really like okay we have a lot of this and we're not gonna be able to get through it I'll bring it to the community fridges. Mm. Yeah. This is I mean this is so wonderful. You, I love that you do this. <laughs> You're like, I'm great. Diva, no, it's, um, I think it's good for, I think it's deeply good for me. 
It's like I do it for selfish reasons where it's like a Tell time to more. see all my friends. I get to eat there every week. Mm. It's also just um, I find it like, you know how I was talking about like having a monkey brain? Yes. Seeing people who like see me, I think is really good for my sense of like self and permanence and like because I have a dissociation disorder so I can feel very out of body Okay. for a lot of a lot of my life. And so doing things where like, first of all, people expect me to be there. If I don't show up, people will notice. And then also like. I used to work at Trader Joe's for a long time and it feels so... I love Trader Joe's. I worked there for like six years. Can't get out of Trader Joe's. I know. Sorry. Me neither. But it's nice to be like to have a job where people are like, oh, do you have this? I'll be like, let me check in the back and then I go have it and I can give it to them. And it's just, it's like, it's yeah, so I mean, nice to just be able to use your body in that way. I will say that sometimes I feel like I am missing that element of physicality in my day to day. I really believe in like using your hands a little bit. Like I think I don't that, know that I do. physical labor is very important for your mind. Um, my body doesn't love it, but like I, my mind probably does. Yeah. But even like, or like, I think that there's a lot of, we, we, I think that you can get a lot out of menial labor, like washing dishes or sweeping or like, yeah. yeah. I, it's so interesting. I look for ways to purge my system of like, stress hormone and cortisol and all these other fun things and so like you know i when i go to the gym like i like to lift weights because to me like i want to release all that all that junk i also have started and this is going to sound like oh like how novel but i've started taking like i take a normal shower and then for the last cold minute showers? or two i turn it down as cold as possible that's really good for you blast it out I got to tell you, I'm waiting for like to know the results. I, I think I'm scared it's it's placebo for me right no, now. No, I think it's real. There's, I have done a, a lot of research about that. I can't for the life of me pull it off. I hate cold showers. But there's mm. a lot of science that suggests that uh, cold showers and cold plunges raises your um, like dopamine, the same amount as cocaine, but it lasts longer. I'm actually going to use this as an opportunity to go to our first segment. Okay. Are you ready for the Newly Friend game? I am absolutely ready. This is called the Newly Friend Game. It's like the Newlywed Game, but the friends. Um, so I'm going to ask you a question. You're going to write down your answer. Don't say it out loud. Okay. I'm going to write down what I think your answer is. Okay. And then we're going to flip them around, see if we're right. And then we'll do the same question for me. I'm going to go in the TV realm for you. Okay. Okay. So we already, because I would have done, I think we already spoke too much about it. I would have done your favorite pilot. Um, why don't we do, I mean, this is a little broad. Why don't we do your favorite TV show of all time. Now, I know you already said King of the Hill, so I'm not going to write that down, but a different show other than King of the Hill, your favorite series of all time. One, two, three, flip. Oh, I loved Vamp Vampy the Vampire Slayer. You chose Chewing Gum. So can I tell you, I didn't, I obviously saw This May Destroy You, but I never saw Chewing Gum. I, I May Destroy You was good, but it was such a departure. Chewing Gum was amazing. It was so funny. It was so fresh to me. It was like I think it was like it, it got caught up for me in the wave of like Fleabag. But it came out before Fleabag. I know, but so it, got, it got caught up in that. Why wave. I didn't like Fleabag because I was like, well, I, I saw Chewing Gum first, and mm -hmm. this is just doing that. Yeah, I'll watch Chewing Gum. I think it was Netflix. It was Netflix. I don't know if it's on Netflix anymore. Oh, but you should check. If not, it'll be on HBO maybe. Um, but this is what we're talking about: physical media. Yeah. I also just I okay two things. I am watching Girls for the first time ever. Can I tell you? I almost wrote Girls. I am, but the thing is, is I can't like it. I love it, but I can't like it. It's so because of the stigma of liking it. No, 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 no. It's just so visceral, and yeah. also all the details are perfect. Like all of Marnie's outfits. Like that's exactly how a dickhead would dress in that era. You know what's so funny? So I was dating. Uh, it was the same girl I told you about who I broke up with. Okay. When my dad died. Wait, can I use your eraser? Oh my god, please. Uh, sorry. It's sad times that you just created there. Um. Uh. When I was dating her, she was like, sometimes I feel like you don't try to like things I like. And I said, I was like, you know what? If you feel that way, like that's how you feel. So even if I disagree, it doesn't matter because that's how you feel. So why don't you tell me something that means a lot to you that you like and let me, let me get in the mix. And she was like, I really like girls. And I was like, great. Give me a couple of weeks. So I burned through two full seasons of girls. And she goes, what do you think? And I go, I understand why you like it. It makes me wildly like uncomfortable and Dude, sad. Dude, it makes my stomach hurt. But that's the point. I was I having know, this discussion. I know, but I didn't want to put myself through that. No, I know. And that's how I feel. But now I've gotten weirdly addicted to it. I don't know. My boyfriend 
is such a girl's truther and was like, you have to watch it. It's it's such an important piece of media. And I was like, all right, whatever. And so I watched the first episode. And I was like, I'm not watching this. Uh. I'm like, Ugh. and now I'm like, truly, I watched a season in like two days. But we also have this because it's such a disgusting show. We can't have sex for like two days after I watch too many episodes Mm-mm. because it's such like a, a sexless, like, even though there's a ton of sex in it. Yeah. I mean, the, I would say that when people were warning me about White Lotus having a really graphic scene in season one where like, have you seen White Lotus season one? Let me tell you something. My hot take, not good. I don't like White Lotus one or two. I don't care for stressful shows. So they're both very stressful. Yeah. But suffice it to say, there's a scene that everyone was like, oh, my God, it's so graphic. It's so graphic. Now, the scene is, uh, you know, a guy eating ass with his younger employee um, who is also a gentleman. And people are like, oh, my God, wasn't it so graphic? And I was like, that's graphic? <laughs> Have you seen the ass eating scene in Girls? But even that that's, wasn't that graphic. But that was, I got to tell you, something, compared to White Lotus, White Lotus was like a children's show compared to the scene in Girls. Interesting. I mean, but but I think the sex scene in Girls are intentionally disgusting. Yeah, like the scene with Sherry Appleby. I was like, dear God. I I fast forward through many of them. Okay. By the way, let's do my question because okay. I wanted to, I was about to bring up another show and then I was like, I can't because it's my show. Okay. Um, what is my favorite show of this all time? This is so tough. Because you're just getting to know me. One, two, three, flip. I wrote Scrubs. Scrubs. You wrote Jersey Shore. Well, mine was sort of a joke. Uh, um, uh, Scrubs. Favorite, favorite so show So watchable. Of all time. My friend's dad was a doctor and he always said that that of all the medical shows in the world, Scrubs was the most accurate. Um, I love Scrubs so much. I've rewatched it about eight times. Really? Probably more. It might have been nine. Uh, it is. I understand some elements of it don't hold up, but again, we talked earlier off oh, mic about the fact I'm okay that, with that you know, uh, comedy is like milk; it's not meant to last forever. Um, but. Um, I love it. And it's so my sensibilities. And Bill Lawrence is one of my oh, he's amazing. favorite people in this whole wide world. I would die to meet him. Really? So I, here's what's funny. What's he doing now? Uh, shrinking. And he just finished oh, right. Ted Lasso. Oh, right. And he's doing, I think it's called Pool Monkeys with Vince Vaughn. It hasn't come out yet. Love Vince Vaughn. Here's what I'll tell you. So Jess and I go to this coffee shop a lot. and Out here? Uh, in WeHo. And there are celebrities Which one? abound. Uh, I mean, it's Soho House. We go over there. <laughs> you know celebrities abound it, it truly i did see george clooney there once so here's the thing so i don't give a shit about just about anybody we sit there like because you're saying like the, the, it doesn't really mean anything to me i am sitting there and about 40 feet away bill lawrence walks by and i grab jess so hard <laughs> Jess goes, what what and i was like don't look up it's bill lawrence and she goes who the fuck is Bill? I was like, shh. Scrubs creator. He, he was also one of the creators of Spin City. He's also one of the creators of Ted Lasso. Also one of the creators of Shrinking. And she goes, let me tell you something. I know how important this guy is to you. I know that. Do you think half the fucking people in this room, have if any I idea. yelled his name out loud, would know, have any clue who this that's man is? That's so funny. And like, that's the person who I was like losing my mind over. I was like, this guy, I would die to just be like, dude, Everything you've done has meant the world to me. That's the exact kind of famous I want to be, where yeah. nobody recognizes my name or my face unless they're a super big fan of my work. That's why you're here. Thank you. Yeah, I'm a super big fan of your work. And I was just like... I mean, that's all I want. Yeah, I was like, Ellery, oh my God. <laughs> Are you, is your ultimate goal to be uh, like a touring arenas theaters maybe not arenas i'd love to be like i'd love to sell a show be a showrunner and then like okay when i'm on hiatus do stand up and have like a comfortable maybe not like arenas but like the wilbur in boston or like that's a great great performance yeah space. exactly where it's like comfy i don't want to do like madison square garden i also don't think my style lends itself to like yeah. i'm i think i'm sort of like a more intimate small room comedian i would love to like do places like like even like the 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 um oh my god what am I thinking of right now it's in it's on La Cienega um oh my god it's escaping me the troubadour sure but I that's not where I would stand oh. to do comedy the Lar- Largo 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 yes that's exactly that's exactly Places what I mean like Largo yeah that's exactly what I mean yeah that's yeah. got a good energy um I am like I saw uh Birbiglia two or three years ago that was the first stand-up comedy album i ever bought was two drink mike really yeah really i used to be able to do it word for word 
Oh, the whole thing? Basically. I would listen to it on my on my iPod before I fell asleep when I was like in the fifth grade. Old. Um, no, old. I'm no, truly old. It I'm, was well, I'm it was older than you. When I, I got I got it because it you it was um do you remember like the ninety nine cent songs on iTunes? Yes. So one of the tracks on it was a ninety nine cent song, and then I, I listened to it, and then I was like, I'll, I'll just buy the album. And it w- I mean, that's crazy to me. I did not have that particular album, but what I will say is, I I remember when I heard Sleepwalk with me, and was just like, what the what the fuck? What is this? What's interesting about that is like that was his first sort of like storytelling show. I always loved storytelling. Me too, but I love his like joke 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 comp. like his first two albums are so good and they're so joke heavy yeah and i was recently i did him at stick or treat this year i don't know what that is you know what stick or treat is never heard of it it's like a big it started in new york it's a big comedy show where everybody dresses up as their favorite comedian and does five of their minutes or like an impression and i did mike Robiglia, and i was listening to um all of his old stuff and i was like yeah i've seen of him live a bunch of times and I've, I've seen every special whatever. And I was like, I kind of miss old Mike. Like I kind of miss old Joe. I love what he's doing, but I'm like, Ira Glass got to you. <laughs> Ira Glass got to you and, and what he a changed problem. you. I I'm not a problem. I'll tell you this. I know the special I would do five minutes from because it's my favorite special of all time. Who's in which one? It's going to be, you're going to look at me like I'm batshit crazy. But it's it, Louis C.K. No. No. <laughs> How dare you? Well, we were making a joke off in my there. own house. Uh, I rarely do it to Jess. I always go the disrespect in <laughs> my own home. And she's like, "I live here too." Yeah, she's like, "It's our home." I was like, "Doesn't matter. I'm the one being disrespected." Uh, <laughs> so, um, I I want to be clear. I understand that this guy like is you know looked at more. He did a sitcom. Looked at more for you know that, and is looked at Ray as a bad Romano. actor. No, uh, Kevin James. He, Kevin James. He had a special called Sweat the Small Stuff. I remember. To me, it is one of the funniest specials ever written. Oh, I love that. Yeah, it is so incredible. Like, like he he like one of the jokes he does I love that. is he's just like he's like, uh, yeah, you know, I uh, I was in a long distance relationship. I was in New York. She was in L.A. And we would do that thing, you know, where you get really sweet on the phone, and she'd be like, "Oh, I miss you," and I'd be like, oh, "I miss you too." And she's like, "Oh, I wish we could be together." And he's like, "I wish we could be together too." And she's like. If only I had a magic carpet. And he's like, mm, I'd be there in like three hours. And he's like, <laughs> three hours? We're assuming she's a magic carpet. What are you scared? You're gonna fall off? You don't want to go too fast? That's funny, but I do think that's a reasonable speed for a magic carpet to go. A magic carpet is a magic carpet. You should just. <laughs> but it's not teleporting. Well, I mean, it's close. I'm enough. on her side in this. I thought it was one of the funniest things. Another one is he, I, and again, I don't usually love act outs, but like he was like, he's like, yeah, I was, uh, I went to the movies with, with, uh, with the same girl. And he was like, you know, what drives me crazy is we go to the movies and, uh, she likes to see it beforehand and then watch it again with me. He's like, so we'll go. And she'll be like, hey, hey, you really watch this part? He's like, oh, really? Let me just, all right, I got it. <laughs> you know, just opening his eyes as wide as possible. That's funny. Um, I also do that too. <laughs> You see movies before you see well, them? Well, I will Google the endings of movies before I see them so that I can enjoy the movie. And then if it's, yeah. And then sometimes if I watch a reality TV show, me and my boyfriend are get really getting into reality TV shows, I'll watch it first so that if he asks me questions, I don't miss anything. Oh, my God. <laughs> Awful. But, like, understandable? Understandable. But uh, but back to the, the shtick or treat, the only other thing I would say, I don't know that I can do a Kevin James impression. I don't do impressions of comics. The only comic I do is the one everybody does. It's like, I was walking down the street. Is that Christopher Walken? Who is that? No, that's 100% Mulaney. It's all... <laughs> Melanie's always doing stuff like that's, this. Okay, see, that's a good, that's a good impression. I think it's um, a good bad impression. It's a good bad impression. I don't know that the, the the quality of the impression matters. I do think you crush better if the if the impression is good. Mm. But like Mike is so easy to to get into. He's like, got such a rhythm. He's got such a rhythm. He's it's a very musical. I'm going to see him again in May. Uh, uh, for what's the new one? The one he's doing with Peacock. He's or is it Old Man in the Pool? No. So I saw Old Man in the Pool. I saw that at Fringe. I. S- did you really? Yeah. Oh my god! I saw that at um, theater, the theater at the Ace. Uh, oh, downtown. cool! And they had the big set. Um, he did. Yeah, they had the big set, and he did it as part of Netflix as a joke, like three years ago or something. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I um, missed that one. And I, I saw did. the new one on Broadway. Um, but I saw this is a new one that he's working right now. I had bought tickets. This is me being stupid. He announced his tour. I'm like, I gotta see it. 
LA, nowhere on that list. San Francisco, nowhere on that list. It was all places except California. And then I spotted uh, Miami. Now, my mother lives now in North Didn't Miami. Didn't he just cancel those shows, reschedule? Yep. Do you listen to his podcast? No. You would love it. It's one of my favorite podcasts. One of my favorite podcast episodes ever is the episode with him and Ray Romano. Really? Yeah. It's so... I mean, I don't even know that the episodes are funny, but they're really interesting and they're good. And it's it's all about like the comedian's process and like what are the new jokes you're working on? And and they talk about how... Did you know that Ray Romano got his sitcom because of his late night set? He had five good minutes on late night and then they offered him a sitcom. I did not know that. And things just aren't fucking like that anymore. Or Mike, because he was 20, he was 24. He did like the late night, whatever late night show he did. He had five good minutes and then he was, he was a headliner. And it's like, things used to be so, I have three Emmy nominations and I'm a nanny. <laughs> like. Congrats, by the way. Thank you. Um, uh, Yeah. My first thought. Uh, so I literally, when I was like telling people, I was like, oh, Ellery's going to be on the pod. They're, they said, they said three Emmy Ellery. And I said, yeah. Wait, who said that? Nobody. Um, um, damn it. I, I'm sorry. Listen. Can we I, start that though? We should. Someone should. Yeah. Emmy noms Ellery. I, that's a great I mean, nickname. It rolls off the tongue. I, I I know you're kidding, but like, I do think it does. <laughs> well. Um, yeah. I think like right now, like someone will do a five minute on a late night set and then you could be like, Hey, I'm doing a show at the Hollywood hotel. Do you want to come do yeah, it? And they like, would sure. say yes. Yeah. That's the, that's the, they would be back at open mics the next week. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. They'll be like, Hey, uh, yeah, I, I'm going to go do a drop in, in the, uh, in the ice house, uh, bringer show. Not the ice. You know? I used to host, um, Dave McNary spot. Yes. I was kidding. Are I used kidding? to host the show for Dave McNary and ever at the end, I mean, may he rest in peace. Yeah, sure. And every, at the end of every, first of all, it was booked off the open mic and yeah. it was 10 comedians doing 10 minutes. Yep. So it was a hundred minute long show. Yeah, I did that show. They, <laughs> they also, the open mic is three or five minutes long. So none of these people ever had 10 minutes. I'm sure that you were a breath of fresh air. I, I was a miracle worker. No, I'm just kidding. No, I um, believe it because they were all, they all sucked. And I never then, did the mic. He just booked you. So I went to go hang out. There's a buddy. I love this guy still named Ray Easter who used to be out here. Did you ever know Ray? Mm-mm. Ray would sometimes step in and host the the open mic. So I was just there to hang out with Ray. And then Dave came up and he's talking to Ray and he goes, who's this? He goes, oh, this is Josh. Like he's, he's great. He's like, he's a good comic. And I was like, yeah, like he, he, we, I've been on the road with him. Like he's great. And, uh, which is not true. I'm just okay. <laughs> and, uh, and, D- and Dave, and Dave was like, cool. You want to do the show? And I was like, Sure. And he was like, great. Uh, and he booked me like fucking like five months in advance or something crazy yes, like that. He did. He did that. And then he gave me, it was really cute. He, he like mailed me. He asked my address and like mailed me little flyers I could hand out. Oh. And I was like, Dave, yes, I'm not going to do that this. That is so sweet. He also ended every show with this joke where he dropped every credit card in his wallet and he pretended to have truly a thousand credit cards. And so that's actually pretty funny. And that's then a good bet. It's, it was very, it was like clowning before I knew what clowning was. Mm. But he would go one, pick them up one by one, <laughs> one by one. And the show ran three hours. Like it was not that long, but it felt forever. And you hosted it? And I hosted it for quite a few years up until the pandemic. That's I mean, crazy they, that you did not host the one I was on. I think Bruce might have hosted the one I was yeah, on. Yeah, maybe. It was, it was, I remember it being good stage time and yeah. I got a bar tab or whatever. And so I would get French fries and some drinks and, you Love know. Love French fries. Me too. Favorite French mm-hmm. fry? Favorite French fry. Yeah. Waffle, curly. Oh, no. Those exist in different categories for me where I'm like, I I like them all in their own moment. The only fries I won't eat are in and out fries. Well, yeah. I mean, like who wants to eat cardboard that no, with salt on it? No, they're dog shit. I'm and like, that is actually terrible. so offensive. It's rude. I also feel like um, French fries need to be the right width. Like they yeah. can't be steak fries and they also can't be I str- shoestring fries. Not for me. But also like when someone's eating a steak fry, I'm like, so you're just eating a baked potato. So hot in the middle. What's the point? I've never eaten one and not scalded the roof of my mouth. Sometimes when I go to bite one, I'm like, do I need a knife and a fork but for this thing? But you kind of do. It's a big wedge. Yeah, I don't like it. Yeah. No, I agree with that. <laughs> I just got so upset. I'm like, I don't I'm also, like it. I really do. I fuck with fries and hummus. I would eat that. Fries as a Middle Eastern. Like I've, I've been going to a bunch of a Mediterranean places yeah. that have French fries. Have you been to Crimson? No. Where is that? Uh, there are two on the west side. It is great. I know you don't want to come to the west side, but you should. No, well, I have to sometimes. Yeah. I was going to say, there's, like a, there's a guy named Drew who might want you to. Um, but literally last night, we were snacking. And, uh, and by that, I mean eating dinner. And I got like... Nice, like, you know, salmon over salad with some labna, and it was, like, really good. 
and um, Jess just got a wrap with French fries, and I started dipping the French fries in the labna, and it was so like, good, perfect, so good. Could have asked for a better meal. Um, are you ready for the final segment? Yes. So the final segment is the lightning round. It's five fast questions. They do not at all have to be fast answers. I use this because one day I think I could be a late night talk show host. We need another straight you white male totally be a with a J. Talk. I mean, I think they'll be hiring. Yeah, like, I, I'm ready. Uh, question one, what is a favorite ritual of yours? So mine is like brewing tea in the morning. I love doing that. Oh, I love that. I think I could stand to be more ritual heavy. Like I think that I okay. suffer from a lack of routine. We've been talking about that. Yeah. I think it I just, suffer from a real lack of routine. Like uh I was a f- I've been a freelancer for most of my adult life. Sure. Which has been wonderful cuz I'm empowered to do what I want, but also my schedule is like I I ne- my day is different every day. Yeah, I could see that. But I guess I guess a ritual that's important to me is I on Tuesdays I do soup kitchen and I've done that every every Tuesday I mean, for the last phenomenal four years. Ritual. Yeah, it's a good ritual and I go and I see my friends and I see people who like you know are excited to see me and and we hang out, we eat good food and and we check in with the community and we just have fun. That's fantastic. Yeah, I think that's really healthy for me. I yeah, I it, it's funny. I wanted to do uh, meals on wheels because they had an opening. They never have openings on the west side. They had an opening, and I was like, I want to be a driver, and uh, and I got all excited. And turns out, like thirty people had applied for that opening. That's and, so um, funny. Wasn't me, um, but that's fine. It's okay. They I do know me. a bunch of. If you're ever interested, in, I know a bunch of random orgs that take take volunteers and donations. I really want to, and this is going to be destructive to me. I have no doubt. I kind of want to like volunteer with an animal shelter, but I just know it's no, not you good ha- for me. I, animal shelters in LA are so desperate for volunteers. I'll, I'll really, bring, I'll bring really, animals home. Can't really, do it. Sure. But um, to a point where there are some that they, the uh, city counselor, chancellor, what is Kenneth Mejia? The C- controller? What, the comptroller. Yeah. Um, comptroller, Oof, right? My bad. Yeah, or no. no, yeah, no. I said controller, but it's comptroller. I have for sure. no, I truly, I have no idea. No, you're right. But anyway, he did some audit on the shelters, and he found out that um, there were animals inside there that hadn't been walked for three months, and like never get to leave their cages because they're so understaffed and they're so underfunded. So if you can volunteer with the animal shelter, any animal shelter in LA, they really need the help. Well, let me know. Oh, well, I'll follow up with you. Okay. You follow up with me. Day. I can, I can hook you up with somebody. And I also know that they're always taking donations of like toys, food, and um clean towels and probably money yeah for yeah. sure money liquid yeah. money is the best donation that anybody i've can never give. had that i only have paper but like i can see what i can do <laughs> <laughs> boom ha ha. I, yeah i know i'm the worst uh question two what is a running bit you have with a friend or partner that makes you laugh this isn't my joke but i think it's a really good joke Hit me. where i have four really close friends from college one of them is is my friend cj and he's known us for like 10 years at this point and any boyfriend that he gets introduced to he calls him skip so any, like boyfriend, any boyfriend of yours or any, any boyfriend anybody has in the group hmm. any and he's has seen us through 25 boyfriends at this sure. point maybe um that person's name is skip to him so he's so he'll say to you like how's skip sure or like i introduced him to my boyfriend at my birthday party and he goes how are you skip he'll say it to his face say it to his face was did you prepare drew for that reality no it was hilarious uh, was Drew just like it it's true. Oh, I mean, he laughed. Oh, he he was in on it. He was yeah. like, I'm good. And it's funny because it's like I, I did girls too and he uh, he hasn't cracked it for girls yet. I'm sure that he'll find some name that would be really funny. I'm trying to think. What is the skip? Equivalent? Maybe maybe like a Jessica. Well, that's the name of my fiance, so I'm going to say no to that. <laughs> um, maybe uh, like a Kim? Yeah. I don't know. I, I think a Kim. Rach. Rachel. Yeah. Interesting. What, maybe. Do we have Mar- a- Maybe a Marnie. I mean, I only think of one person with Marty. And here's what's so weird. True. I think about Allison Williams, and then I immediately think about one of my favorite movies of last year, Megan. And then I'm just So like, good. I went to a screening of Megan where there were two applause breaks. Um, Can I tell you? Everyone was like, like oh, that movie so bad. That was my so favorite bad. movie of last year. I loved it so much. So good. I walked out. I was an evangelist for no, Megan. No, literally. I'm like, it was, I also am not a critical movie viewer. Okay. Where my, like, rubric on is it a good movie is did I have fun? Yeah. The most fun movie I saw all year. Could not have enjoyed it more. And I saw Barbarian, and then I saw Megan, and I was like, I am on a roll. Like these, this shit is fun. We went through. I never used to watch horror movies, and like after the pandemic, we like Jess hadn't watched them either. But during the pandemic, she goes, should we start watching some? I was like, why? And she goes, can't be scarier than this. So true. And so we started watching a bunch. Um, my favorite horror movie, probably the past five years, uh, is Smile. Oh, I never saw that, but I uh, remember. The, I remember the marketing campaign. Smile was 
So really? good. Loved okay, it. I'll have and to listen, watch. I liked Barbarian, right? More than more than just it. I really liked Barbarian. Loved Megan to itty bitty pieces. Could not get enough Megan. Liked Pearl a lot too. But Smile for me was just really? everything. Okay, yeah. I love that. I'll have to watch. But it is scary, just a heads up. No, I like that. I like scary movies. Okay. Question three, what is a controversial opinion that you have? Well, you know that I'm a sleep evangelist. I love that you're a sleep evangelist. I have two. I have one, and this is not one I came up with, but one I heard and I believe. Mm-hmm. Six hours of sleep is just as bad as not getting any sleep at all. Uh, wow. Okay. Men need eight hours of sleep. Women need nine to ten hours of sleep. But you only get eight. I know, but it's hard to get ten. It really is hard to carve out that much time. Are you carving on the front end or the back end? Are you going to sleep much earlier or are you waking up I later? go to sleep much earlier. Uh, but sometimes I go to sleep late. Or I mean, sometimes I wake up late. Are you I going, actually do kind of get 10 hours of sleep a night mostly. Are you I, doing like do 11 like, to 8? I do 11 to 8. I try to do 1045 to 745, but most mostly it's like 1045 or 11 to like 9. I mean, and if you're booked on a late show, you're just like, you you suck it up, but you're not happy about it. Yes, Mm -hmm. exactly. Exactly. And I don't really do after midnight shows, but there aren't that many after midnight shows in LA. Not anymore. Not anymore. There were. There were. And then my second, and this one is going to be a little personal for you. Uh My second controversial opinion is I think fish are really dirty. I think fish are full of microplastics. I think. Oh, you mean from consuming fish? I think consuming. I wouldn't, I wouldn't consume a fish if you paid me. Wow. But you consume an animal. Or sorry, you well, you don't consume animals. I don't consume animals. But if I paid you, would you consume a chicken? If it yeah, not a factory farm chicken, but like if I if you knew somebody who had a farm and killed chickens, I'd eat that. If you had to. Or you would anyway. I think I, I think I would be open to it, definitely. That's okay. like a lifestyle I can get where I think like I think the most environmentally friendly way to eat meat is to eat meat you know. Uh, yeah, I would agree. I get to know all of the fish before I eat them. But they're dirty because our oceans are dirty. Our oceans are disgusting. Um, and so the fish are disgusting. Hillary, I mean, that's just my, I mean, you asked for a controversial opinion. I mean, it is controversial. Uh, question four. Have you ever experienced imposter syndrome? And if so, is there a specific moment that sticks with you? Oh my God. Every single, yes. I, I suffer very heavily from imposter syndrome. Less so now than when I was a kid. Yeah. Like, you know, younger. But when I got staffed for the first time on, on Robot, I was very... For those listening, it's Robot Chicken. Robot Chicken. Yeah. I was very, very young. Um, I was I just out of college, and I had to email my showrunner for the first time and, and introduce myself. I had met him in our interview. Sure. But then, you know, I was like, okay, I got hired. Like, I, let me drop him a line. And I got so nervous that I passed out. And I hit the floor, and I was, I was in Boston at the time, and I was with my friend David McLaughlin. Shout out, David. Love David. And Dave, I mean, he's a brilliant comedian. If you guys should all follow him. Um, and he called 911. And because we were in Boston and because of what, you know, what year it was, they were like, are you sure she's not on heroin? And he was like, no, I think she's just nervous. <laughs> I think she just got scared. And were they like, we're not sending an ambulance? No, they're for- like, we're not sending anybody. And you were just like, well, okay. well I was like, I can't afford it anyway. You're like, I, I, was like, died. I, I remember coming to him and be like, hang up. Like, I'm okay. Don't worry about it. I just got really scared. I once had uh, more to drink than I should have. And I turned to my buddy. I was like, I think we need to call the ambulance. And he was like, I don't think so. I was like, do it. <laughs> I said, you got to do it. Did it. The The guys come. They go, what, what what's going on? I was like, I've had too much to drink. I think it's a problem. And he was like, if you're having this conversation with me, I you're don't fine. know that it is. Oh, my God. Um, and it was just like an absolutely like I it was an embarrassment and and I feel very bad for the guy who was the guy who was with me still one of my best friends to this day Aww. but like putting him through that I was like oh my god I was I mean a they couldn't give idiot. you an IV and just get you back to baseline honestly wouldn't have hated it I mean, literally, um, that's you know, very funny yeah but like yeah been there final question for you and sometimes we amend this but I feel like you're a tea drinker so I'm gonna give it to you the real way what is your favorite tea I'm a big peppermint head. Okay, a peppermint. I love peppermint we want chamomile tea. today. I know. I did. I did enjoy the chamomile, but um, I t- peppermint tea is so good for digestion. I love it. I have it. I drink it uh, many a night. Yeah, it's like it's the perfect tea. I also like how it's like it's not spicy, but it is spicy. It's like I love it. You know, um, in fact, I would love for somebody to invent a spicy, like an actual spicy tea. And you never had like a spicy chai or anything? No, but that's not spicy enough. I mean like a, like almost maybe I'm thinking of, maybe I'm inventing broth, but. (laughs) (laughs) 
Yeah, like like a, like one that's like made from like stock. No, but and, not you know, stock. I mean, like I want something bouillon like cubes steeped. in there. Steeped. I don't want a chicken flavor. I want like a cayenne flavor. I want like a cayenne and lemon. Well, I mean, you've had hot water with cayenne yeah, and lemon Yeah, but it doesn't before. have enough of a, a flavor profile. It's not, it, yeah. I'm going to invent one. I'm going to pull Chase aside. Well, or maybe like a red pepper flake. I've never seen that in a tea, but you could be the first. Like I would, lo- I love spicy food. I love warm spicy food. I mean, you are starting a beverage company. So. I am starting a beverage company, but I think that this might be a niche product that only a few people would be interested um, in. But you know what? Every Everything needs a niche product. You know what That's I mean? So My friend has a theory that um, because... Vegan food tastes like shit. Vegans are attracted to really powerful flavors or or painful <laughs> flavors, spicy. Sure. And so I do like really strong. Like ghost pepper. Yeah, I love spicy food. I love tangy food. I love mustards, obviously. Well, no, obviously. Before you even said that, I, I knew. I love curries. I love curries. Love curries. I also love... Curry has such an interesting... Because I think curry is best the next day where it congeals. Sure. And then I love when something is spicy and also cold. I've had that. That is such an amazing. I'm like, I can't believe I'm alive to like experience that. Like the fact that you can, you can tell when something is cold, but it's also hot. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) anyone who wants to become friends with Ellery who's listening. It's very simple. You've got to bring her something that's cold, but, but it's hot, but it's hot. Yeah. I mean, that is such a divine experience. Did you ever think in your life you'd, You'd be able to to witness something like that. Maybe candid. I didn't give it a whole lot of thought. Well, that's. <laughs> I try to lean into details. That's and I'm glad the, that you did. That's another thing about my monkey brain, where now I, I have to like lean into to details on stuff. I'd be upset if you didn't. Just I know, now. and exactly. Um, that was the pod. How do you feel? Oh my god, so fun. Good. You're welcome anytime. Please, Please. come back. Oh my god, I'd love to. I have so much more stuff to talk about. Good, because we're gonna we're gonna bring you back when you're four Emmy Ellery. I mean, God willing, brother. <laughs> I did just write um on a new episode of Robot Chicken, so I'm hoping that that will be. When does it air? We'll tell people to go watch Not it. Not till like August or something. Okay. Y- y'all are going to forget. Yeah. Um, they'll but, forget. But I'll, go frankly, watch it. I will forget. Yeah, uh, I will too. Text me. I'll go watch it. <laughs> okay. Um, thank you for coming. Oh my God. Thank you for having me. And thank you for the tea. And my shout out Chase O'Donnell. Uh, shout out Chase O'Donnell. That's the way to end an episode. That was Ellery Smith. You can find her on Instagram at Ellery underscore Smith and on Twitter at Ellery Smith. This episode was produced by Dylan Rosenthal. It was edited by Martin Alvarez. Our theme song and additional music are by Oliver Hymack. Our cover art was done by Neil Fraser with photography by Matt Mazisco. Social media by Dia Villegas. Please write a review and rate our podcast on Apple Podcasts and wherever else you can. You can send any questions, comments, newly friend game suggestions, or tea suggestions to steepcombos at gmail.com or tweet us at steepcombos. I'm Josh Lanzette, and you can follow me on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook at Josh Lanzette. We'll be back next week. So until then, happy steeping. Well, we have three more questions, and we're going to send okay. you to sleep. Okay. Uh, not here. That sounded terrible. We're going to let you sleep elsewhere. They refeed me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> um, 